we will expand it a little bit. What was that? Okay, so Jesus said to his disciples, <clears throat> Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow. <laughs> it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Right? How hard can that be, Mia? Mia is the one who loves uh, sewing. How, how big is an eye of a needle? <laughs> you can't even see through it sometimes, right? When you try to pass through uh, um, a, a, um, uh, thread. a thread through it. Now what more a camel? So that's what our Lord uses as, a, as a, an analogy. It's, it's a lot harder for, for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. When the disciples heard, heard this, they were greatly astonished and said, Who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For men, this is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. For men, this is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. Okay. So what are we what is our Lord reminding us here? That okay, all things are possible with God. Why? Why are all things possible with God and many things are impossible for us men to do? Any guesses, Joe? Because? Because God is God. He is all-powerful. He is almighty. He is omniscient. Right? He knows all things. He can do all things. He is all-powerful. He created everything. Right? He created us. And He created heaven for us. So He wants us to be in heaven with Him. But we have to understand we have a broken nature because of sin. And sin makes it very difficult to the point of making it impossible to gain heaven just with our own brute force. That's not the way we're going to gain heaven. We're going to gain heaven with the grace of God. But let's go back to <clears throat> the example of, or the, the obstacle. Let's go back to the obstacle that our Lord wants us to understand here. He talks about riches. And as we saw already yesterday, it's not just a question of having possessions. The real obstacle is not the possessions, it's not the riches, but it is the what the attachment to them right it is the attachment to them now guess what the truth is it's not only possessions that we can get attached to that we need to wiggle away from it's not only possessions there are several other things many other things that our heart gets attached to and when we get attached to those things they become an obstacle to our sanctification. They can become an obstacle to our sanctification because we, get, we, can, we have the tendency to get attached to things and to other matters for the wrong reasons. For the wrong reasons. And when, and we, when, when we have the wrong reasons for such attachments, we're in trouble. We're in trouble because they weigh us down. Those things will weigh us down. Okay, uh, and here is how attachments weigh us down. I'll give, you, I'll give you a very, very good analogy here. Imagine a bird 
What is a bird made to do? Fly, right? A bird, let's say a big, e a big eagle, soars to the mountains, flies to the highest uh, heights that uh, it's almost like it can soar to the sun, right? Now, try tying a string on the, the, the feet of that bird or that eagle with a brick on the other end of it. What's going to happen to that bird? Can it fly? No. Eh? Will it be able to soar to the sun like eagles do? Can they? No. no? They may be able to flutter, right? They may be able to stay up a little bit, but they will never be able to really take off and be free and really soar and really explore the mountains and the tops of the trees and, and all that. They can't. Why? Because they're weighed down with such weights that they are attached to with a string. You got to cut off those strings for them to be able to soar and fly freely all the way to the heavens. Now you see, you and I can get attached to many things in this life that become like heavy bricks that ties down our souls. And when that happens, we cannot soar to God. We cannot be free to soar to the heights of heaven because we have bricks that are tied to our the, 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 the feet of our souls, so to speak. Now, what are these other forms of attachments? Let's make a rundown of these things. So it's not only material possessions that we can get attached to. Okay? For example, we can get attached to our ego. Me, 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 me. Everything about me is the most important thing in the world. I don't care about what happens to anybody else but me. We can get attached to ourselves. We can get attached to how good we think we are. We can get attached to our looks, our good looks. We can get too attached to to our uh, uh, good looks that we pay attention to every pimple that pops out of our face and get so worried about, I wonder when it's going to disappear or what can I do to help the pimple disappear? <laughs> we can, right? That, that, that can happen. Oh, you know, there's a strand here of hair that doesn't want to quite uh, stay in place. I wonder what more gel I can put so that it stays there. Right? Oh, 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 look at my, oh, look at how nice my, 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 my little goatee is. Oh, I can, oh, look at my muscles. Oh, look at my long, pretty hair. Or oh, look at my, <laughs> look at my beautiful eyes. We can get so attached to our looks. See, even to our physical appearance, we can get so attached to them. That every time we go to the mirror, we are like that uh, wicked witch who says, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? <laughs> See, we get so attached that that can actually a big, be, be like a big brick that ties our soul. See, we get so attached to our vanity. See, vanity, vanity, vanity. All things are vanities. What else? We can get attached to our ideas. I'm the only one who has the brightest idea in the room. All of your other opinions are wrong. I am the only one who's right here. Right? <laughs> to the point where he doesn't, you, you, you don't even listen to, to what others have to say. Right? That's very easy. That, that can very easily happen to anybody. To anybody. You get so attached to your ideas. And you know, if, if you're not careful about these, the, 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 this matter, 
<laughs> this this can be a problem all the way up to when you're you're working already with other people and you don't want to listen you don't want to be open to to uh, uh, other ideas and other opinions and sift them through the uh, membrane of uh, of uh, you know rationality and you get too attached to your own opinions that there's no room for for uh, other ideas in your life because you only want to believe what you want to believe you only want to uh, stick to your own bright ideas okay? that is an attachment too that we need to get rid of see why, why do you think are we in a political mess nowadays here in America okay? <laughs> that's, that's one consequence it's because people are so attached to their own opinions that they have no room. They don't give any room for debate and intellectual discourse anymore. Right? And that's a very bad thing to do. What else? We get attached to our own health. We get so uh, health conscious that, uh, you know, we end up being like, uh, what do you call that, OC uh, tendency? What do you call that? Obsessive, Obsessive compulsive. <laughs> right? You cannot eat uh, uh, anything anymore. You cannot do uh, certain activities anymore. Everything is harmful for you because everything's going to affect your health. Right? So from now on, no more peanut butter, no more Nutella, no more <laughs> all of those kinds of things. Right? I mean, I'm not saying that we don't eat healthy, but everything has to be taken in moderation. And sometimes... We forget about that moderation part and we get so attached to the idea of a Herculean health, right? Just muscle man or I don't know what. That sometimes health can be an obstacle to, to us pursuing the mean and the virtuous kind of life. Okay? What else? We can get attached to our projects. Oh! Oh! Oh, I need to finish this because this is my baby. This is my project. It's going to be the best thing I'm ever going to invent in the world. It's going to be, you know, a, a, this is this is going to be my, uh, my, 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 my. Again, again, it's about me, 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 I, me, me, me. My project. I got to finish what I'm doing. I started this. I'm going to finish what I'm doing. To hell with my chores, you know, that can wait. To hell with helping others in the house. Um, to hell with uh, taking care of the affairs of other people. Because I have a project to do. <laughs> it's as though the project is the most important thing in the world. No ma'am. No sir. That project, however great that project is has to be put in the proper context of the greater project of life, the greater project of becoming a saint. Okay? Let's not be attached to our little projects in life. What else? My reputation. I have to, uh, you know, I, I, I cannot sacrifice my reputation. I need to always be uh, goody goody to other people other people always need to look at me as the good guy as the smart guy as the guy who can get along with everybody else I'm the guy who cannot hurt a fly <laughs> so, uh, we're too attached to our own reputation that that because we're so attached to our own reputation we become silent when we need to oppose evil you know, because we don't want to appear as the bad guy who opposes evil in the world, who comments about the wrong things that happen around him. We just want to appear goody-goody because we are protecting a reputation that we are so attached to. Bad. Some people get attached to their job. Their work, to the extent that they forget they have a family to take care of. 
to the extent they forget that they have children who have needs, to the extent that they don't understand how work is only a means to sanctity. They get so attached to what they're doing, to their position in life, that they forget the more important things they have to live up to in life. A lot of people get attached to their work, to their jobs, at the expense of family, at the expense of everything else that they have to do in life. That's why there's no balance in their life because of the attachment to work. What else? People get attached to friends. Friends and family. Eh? We get so attached to friends and family that the separation from friends eats us up and gets us so sad and melancholy. I miss my friends. I miss my friends. I miss my friends. I mean, friendship is good. Don't get me wrong. I'll be the first one and I'm always the first one encouraging you to make friends. But friends too, just like anything else, have a role to play in our lives. And they are not the be all and end all of living, <laughs> um, you know very well, I have plenty, plenty of friends. I can't even count them anymore. But attachment, attachment to certain people, to friendships, can be a very bad thing. They can be strings that weigh us down, that don't allow us to soar to the heavens. We have to be very careful about attachment to friends. We have to understand that friends are there and we have to seek out friends and we have to make plenty of friends. For what? What's the purpose? Just so we can have fun? Is it just so that we have people to talk to? Is it just so that we have a source of consolation when we need some? Nah. The real purpose of friendship is so that we become instruments of God to bring these friends to heaven with us. Man is a social being. Man needs to associate with other people. But that association should be put in the proper perspective. It is not for our own consolation alone. It is not just for our own uh, uh, companionship. It is not just for enjoyment of life. It is supposed to be an avenue to bring people to God. To bring people close to God. So that together with our friends, we can enjoy the promise of heaven with God forever. So as you can see, in all of these things that we have mentioned, all of these other examples of things we can get attached to, okay, there's one underlying theme here that things we get attached to for the wrong reasons weigh us down weigh us down they cannot allow us to go to heaven so we need to cut the strings that weigh us down we need to cut the attachments so that we can soar like birds and eagles to God and if we are at all to use all of these other things we had mentioned, ourselves, our family, our possessions, our friends, our ideas, our projects, our work, all of them are just means. 
means that should bring us closer to God. If they are no longer bringing us close to God because we have been attached to them for the wrong reasons, then we got to cut them off. We got to cut those strings off because they are not allowing us to go to heaven. They're not allowing us to become saints. They're not allowing us to live our lives the way God has intended these things to be for us. So we have to be very, very careful about these other attachments. It's not only about attachment to wealth, but attachment to anything is not good. Not good for us. Okay? And the way that we are going to get rid of attachments is to always look at our association with these things in the context of why God has put them there for us to begin with. Why has God put you in that family? Why has God put these friends with you, before you? Why has God put that work for you? Why has God given you that project to do? Why has God given you all the good looks you have? <laughs> what is that for? What, does, what has God given you all the possessions you have? Why did God give you all the smarts that you have? All of this, all of these things is only a means to get you to heaven. It is only a means to make you a saint and to use you to make other people saints. If we are not using all of these things for that purpose, then we are lost. We, 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 we don't know what they are there for. We, we have lost our purpose and we have lost the purpose of why God has given all these things for our use in the first place. And that is going to breed attachments. Attachments that will weigh us down and won't allow us to soar to the heights of heaven like the eagles do. And by the way, those attachments inevitably will lead us to sin. In the end, attachment to anything is actually really attachment to sin. Undue attachments to anything in this world is just an expression of our attachment to sin. And that is why we have to put all the effort with God's grace to be detached from all of these things that we had mentioned earlier. From possessions to ourselves, to our ideas, to our projects, to our work, our job, including our family. Okay? Remember where our Lord says, whoever does not leave father or mother or lands for my sake is not worthy of me. He doesn't mean to say we have to abandon our parents and abandon everything. No, that's not what it means. It means we have to be detached. We have to be detached. Because look at your parents and your family, for example. If you are not detached, if you don't live detachment, you'll never get married. <laughs> See, our Lord says, well, you know, a man leaves his, his parents to cling to his wife and vice versa. See, that is an expression of detachment because God is putting two people together in order to form another family, a new family. But if you were so attached to your parents, you'll never get married. And, well, if you had a vocation to marriage, then you, you're not going to fulfill it in violation of what God had intended for your life. Same thing is true if God was calling you to the priesthood or to the nunnery or whatever uh, religious life and you, and you, because of your attachment to your parents, don't want to answer the call of God. Well, then that's not good. You see, so even the best things in life, such as family, we have to put in there that ingredient of detachment. We have to be detached. Okay? Eh? Uh, from our families too, in the right way, okay? in the right sense. It doesn't mean to say abandoning them. It just means prioritizing whatever God uh, has called us to do. And if in that sort of priority, uh, it, it includes leaving our parents, leaving our family, in order to embrace the vocation that God is giving us, then so be it. See? So, let us learn to be detached. It's not easy. It is not easy. 
Detachment is not an easy thing, but we have to try to do it with the help of God's grace. As our Lord Himself has said here, for men this is impossible, but nothing is impossible with God. With God all things are possible. Let's pray for the grace of God with a lot of humility. Pray that we learn to be detached from all of these things so that we can soar to heaven like eagles do okay that's it for us folks have a good day everybody hope to see you again tomorrow morning bye-bye bye bye, bye. bye.